All right. Welcome to another episode of the Stability and Opportunity Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Zimmerman. Grateful as ever to be here with you, be here with our special guest for the day as we uncover things that are working in today's market, the psychology of success, knowing what to say, knowing what to do. And of course, what we most care about here is giving you a place where you can connect, feel accountable, and walk away at today's episode with things that are going to help you stay busy and productive during these times. And so let's get a couple of things going right now with our man, Mr. Brian Moses, who he is the Tony Robbins of real estate. He is the former top Cobell banker agent in the world. He is here with us today to share things that I know about him. I've got a personal relationship out, outside of this. And when I got the opportunity to invite people to come on the show. He was one of the first people I wanted to bring on. His schedule finally allows for it. If you could see this guy's schedule, I've seen his schedule, time blocked. It is like crazy. It's like a Tetris board. Uh, so it's really a great pleasure to have this guy on the show. He's gonna really give you so many great things. If you've never seen him on stage, this is a great opportunity to meet him. If you've seen him from stage, this is a great way to get reconnected with him. So Brian, thanks so much for jumping on here with us today. Just it's great to see you. You look like a million bucks all decked out with your tie. I feel you know, like and it's not a clip on. It You look great. It's great to be with you today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's wonderful. One thing we like to do to start the show is, and I know you've got dozens of them, and so it's putting you on the spot, but you're a man of many reflexes and talent of <laughs> positivity here. Quotes. Start the day with a quote. So if there's something that speaks to you now or speaks to the clients and coaching customers that you have that is really resonating. If you could bring that out right now, that'd be a great way to set the mindset aspect of today's show. Well, that does put me on the spot. There's so many good ones out there, but I would say in these challenging times that what you focus on expands. And we have the opportunity today to uh, recognize that we're human beings and human beings, unlike animals, have free choice. And we have a choice to choose whether or not we're going to suffer today or whether or not we're going to live in a beautiful state. So that sounds easier said than done. But how you alter from feeling shitty, crappy, suffering to feeling amazing, healthy, vibrant, hopeful, optimistic is you change your focus. What you focus on expands. And I have a ritual every morning I start with, what am I grateful for? And I'm not talking about, oh, you know what? I woke up today. I'm alive. I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I'm grateful for that. But I supercharge what I'm grateful for. I put adjectives and emotions into it. And it's really hard to feel crappy when you really consciously think about how fortunate we are. I'll just, you know, not to go on a wrap down a rabbit hole, but one of the things I'm super grateful for is the fact that we're Americans and we live in this country hmm. and we've had veterans that have sacrificed their lives for us and paid the ultimate sacrifice. And when you wake up in the morning and you actually pay tribute to that, People would kill for our problems. I mean, I'm going through challenges like many, many Americans. They pale in comparison to other people in the world. So what you focus on controls how you feel. And I just choose. And sometimes I'm le more successful than others because I am human. But I choose to feel blessed and grateful and opportunistic and abundant and that I'm growing. So that that was my knee jerk reaction to your question. I'm, I'm glad I put you on the spot. And before we really dive into the things that we're going to talk about, specifically that mindset, specifically, this is called the stability and opportunity podcast for a reason. We're going to dive into how to see things with opportunity. I just want to let all our audience know, welcome back, everybody, Connie, especially uh, a couple of quick housekeeping items before we jump into the show. One, if you're a Red X customer, especially a new Red X customer, I'm 
reminding you to please go and take your orientation webinar. That's going to help you understand how to use our tools, how to get the groundworks and frameworks working in your interest to take advantage of the opportunity, to take advantage, advantage of the tactics we're going to get into. And so uh, go into your Gmail or wherever you receive your email and type in welcome Red X and that should bring that up. And so I'm sure uh, Bryson's listening to this right now, our support director our customer service director saying, thank you, Justin. Thank you so much. Um, also for everybody who's been waiting for the scripts that we've been pulling out of each one of these episodes, Tyler Lee, our videographer behind the scenes, he's got the collection right now being worked on. And so he's putting together a video of every single one of the best scripts that have come out of the last 15 episodes. And so in the next couple of days, I'd say no later than Wednesday, no later than Wednesday, if you're on the email list right now to receive these episode updates, you're going to get a copy of that. If you're not, go to theredx.com forward slash blog, wait for the pop-up. We're gonna send you that as well, just to get on the list. And so I just wanna make sure everybody has everything they need going forward, because right now is the time. We're gonna jump into the tactics and tools, the mindset and abilities that Mr. Brian Moses is ready to deliver on us. So um, mindset, Tony Robbins, real estate, High performance cultures, high performance teams, high performance families, high performance individuals. We know that they're all based off of principles. And so if you could share with us what you believe to be are some of the most highest performing principles that you've seen in the world of uh, that whole Tony Robbins circle and then translate them into what our audience here needs to know and do. It's a phenomenal question, and I'm a student. I've been a student of Tony for 30 years, and I guess you could say I'm a slow learner. But um, it's been an amazing journey. And to concisely answer your question, there's a lot of components, but I would say, Justin, that it has to do with your standards. And you know, we get in life what we tolerate, and you know, the the sad part is is there are people that are struggling in different areas of their life, whether it's health, whether it's relationships, whether it's finance. And the truth of the matter is, with, with some exception, but generally not, it has 100% to do with your standards. They're where we are in life because we've accepted where we are in life. And when you raise your standards, when you make a decision and say, no more, enough, I'm done. I'm in. I'm all in. When you make that decision to raise your standards, you instantly raise the quality of your life. And I'll tell you recently, you know, it's been a struggle for me for a number of years, health and fitness and vitality. Didn't like to work out. Didn't like to eat nutritiously. Don't like my vegetables. You get to a point and we all get to a point where enough is enough. And I didn't like how I was looking anymore. And in that moment of decision where I said enough, everything changed. And um, it's no longer acceptable. There was a time in my life, Justin, I've shared this with you at events that I've spoken at, where I'm not proud of the financial mess that I've been in, you know, in my early 20s don't have the money, don't pay the bills. And it was acceptable for me to not pay the bills. Then it was acceptable for me to not pay the IRS. And I didn't think about it consciously. I just like, hey, I'll pay you when I get the money. But when you make a conscious decision, because we are conscious human beings and we, can't, we do have the freedom to cho choose. When we say enough is enough, or I want more, I deserve more, and we make that decision to raise our standard, we dramatically improve that quality of our life. And I'd like to think that I have ridiculously high standards. I have high standards of myself, expectations of myself, expectations of others. And as a result of those higher standards, I've had the privilege to been blessed with a great quality of life because I don't put up with shit, right? My kids are phenomenal. And it's because I have the hard conversations about what's acceptable and what's not. As a real estate coach, I elevate people to new heights because they've been, ex they've been tolerant of what they have in their life when they're capable and deserving of so much more. So I would say to answer your question, the one thing, the one secret 
is raise your damn standards. Say, I'm, you know what? My new year starts right now today. It doesn't need to be January 1st. It doesn't need to be when we get on the other side of these challenging times. It can start right now. And you make that decision. And decisions not only can change your life, they can change the world. They can change your community. It's pretty powerful stuff. And you, this is not to be confused with positive thinking. You know, positive thinking, these, there are people that run around, oh, the, the, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, it's a beautiful day, but it's going to be a pretty shitty financial day for you if you don't do something about it. It's a beautiful day, but you're going to be fat if you don't take care of yourself. So it's not about positive thinking. It's about choosing what you focus on and having standards that are higher than other people. And not that you're better than other people because we're not, but just we don't tolerate less. Like the there are people that are homeless in this country and they've accepted that it's okay to be homeless and they're going to be homeless for another year, two years. And then there are people that were homeless that one day they said, I'm not sleeping under a bridge anymore. And that decision, their destiny is created. Same is true in real estate, since we're talking to great professionals out there. You know, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired and you go, no more, you will find the resources, the tools, the strategies, the drive within you to change the trajectory of your life. And it's a pretty awesome experience. I love that. One thing that comes to mind as I welcome some of our guests back again, Amanda, thank you so much. Bismarck Holmes, thank you for the uh, praise on the content we're putting out here. Um, symptoms, right? Sometimes people don't know that what they don't know. And so how do you know if your standards aren't high enough? How do you know if you have low standards? What is that conversation you have, I'm sure, with agents across the country to break into their view on things? All right. So I'm going to give credit to Tony because this isn't my content. This is Tony's, but I'll answer it quickly and concisely. If your results are less than what you'd like in life, your standards are low. So if you're not where you want to be, it has 100% everything to do with your standards. There's four levels of standards. The lowest level is level four, poor standards equal what type of results, Justin? Sounds like poor results. Okay, and then it's a giant leap from poor to good. And there are people that have good standards and we could have standards in different areas of our life, right? So there, there are some people that are really fit and they're, that you look at them and they look like they should be on the cover of muscle and fitness. But then you look at their finances and their finances are in the tank or their relationships in the tank. So you can have amazing standards in one area of your life and really crappy standards in another area of your life. So level four is poor. You get poor results. Then we have good. What kind of results would you get if you have good standards? Good results. Catching on, buddy. Thanks. Okay, and if you're playing along at home too, this is interaction with Justin and I. It's another giant leap. It's another giant leap. Excellence is level two. And when you have excellence as a standard, you would think you'd get what kind of results? Excellence. Okay, but here's the problem. We live in a very competitive society. It used to be that way 100 years ago. Now, if you have poor standards, you don't get poor results. You get homeless. You get destitute. You get divorced. You get bankrupt. You get starvation. You get disease. You get death. Tony shared with me once. He goes, Brian, you know, being a public figure, every week somebody comes up to me and goes, oh, my God, Tony Robbins, you're amazing. I just lost my job. My wife left me. Can you tell me why? I'm a good man. And Tony says, I don't have the heart to tell him. It's because you're good. 
See, when you're good, you don't get good results. You get poor results. Is this making sense, Justin? Yeah. Right? So, and then if you have excellence as a standard, which is a giant leap, like if you have excellence as a standard, you'd think that you would get excellence. But no, if you have excellence as a standard, you only get good results. So here's the secret. It's only a two millimeter leap to go to level one, to stand out, to have a standard where you stand out. I had that standard in real estate. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to be known as, holy shit, I want to be like that guy. He knows what to say when the seller asks, will you cut your commission? He knows what to say when they say, hey, can we only list it for 30 days? He knows what to say when the seller says, I want to think it over. I wanted to be skilled. I had a standard to be outstanding. And because that was my standard, I got excellence as a result. Hmm. My son, um, my oldest, he's a two-time martial arts, third degree black belt, world champion. That result is because of his standard. So when you understand that your standards produce your results, it's really easy to get the results that you want. You've got to raise the standard, but you've got to be willing to do it and you really have to mean it. It's not one thing to say, well, I'd like to be thin and skinny. It's a must that you go, enough. Okay. If you've ever been in a bad relationship, why do we tolerate that? Because good was our standard, so we get poor results. Like he's good to me most of the time. Well, raise your standards. So I hope that's helpful. I'm passionate about it, as you can probably hear in my voice. But it's been a gift to have that mental cognitive awareness. And I, listen, I am, you know me, Justin, I am far from perfect. You've interviewed my wife. She's, you know, she's, She's the amazing human being behind this guy. But we're, it's it's life is a journey, and I'm always striving to be better. And I'm growing. And I'm proud to say that, you know, year over year, I've made distinctions. I've I've filled up my cup with books and seminars and education and environment and seeking out people. So it's it's a process, for sure. Absolutely. That was very well put. And if you're in the audience right now watching this live, if that was meaningful to you or you thought what Brian just said, give us a little shout out in the comments. Or if you're watching this after the fact, make some comments below on the video. Just show some love for that if that was ever at all helpful for you or helpful for you now. And uh, before getting to the next topic or, or the next topic, uh, I would like to ask you about the categories of excellence. I think there's the book, The One Thing, and it's hard for people to focus on a lot of things at once. We all know distraction is probably the leading cause of death for most real estate agents' professions. And yeah, and uh, right now, more than ever, um, focus is that number one priority. So if you could help us focus in on one of the categories of excellence for our audience right now, what would that be? And then dive into some of the details on what they can do to go from uh, good to great to excellent. Wow. You say that so much more eloquently and articulate than I ever could, but I'll do my best to answer the question. I'll try to uh, put it in a way that people can understand it and be, it's useful. Um, I would say that excellence sucks because if your standard is excellence, then you get good results. So I would raise the standard to be outstanding and then you get great results. But with that finite little distinction, some, some characteristics of what makes that outcome a reality are discipline and skill. A lot of us think that motivation is important and they're all important. And, you know, when I do events, I always ask the audience, you know, we need to be motivated and we need to be skilled and no matter what it is that we do in life, you know, both of those are important. Which is more important? And profoundly, everybody says motivation. And I was motivated when I got into the business, but I struggled for five years. So it wasn't because I wasn't motivated. It was because I didn't have the skills. 
So one of the greatest gifts ever is that my mentor, Tony Robbins, told me that skills were more important than motivation. And as a parent, I've been able to share that with my children. My kid wants to play college football. He's not playing college football because he wants to play college football. He's only going to play college football because he's been disciplined to acquire the skills to beat out the next in line. That's the only way it's going to happen. The only way you're going to beat me on a listing is if you outskill me. And because I've worked my tail off, it's going to be, I've made it difficult for people to beat me. Um, Wayne Gretzky, some of the greats, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, those guys are the most skilled people on the planet. So skill is more important than motivation. And if you don't still believe me or you're still skeptical, let's imagine that you have a bomb underneath your chair right now. You're motivated to save your family. Do you pull the red wire, the yellow wire, the blue wire, the green wire, pull the wrong wire and you're dead. You're motivated, but how valuable would it be to know this, have the skill to know which wire to pull? So the one thing, if I had to pick one, there's a lot. We could, we could talk for days, but I would say develop your skill. So how do you do that? You create habits and rituals and you have a schedule. So every day I used to wake up and role play with myself. Once a week, I would go into my conference room and I would whiteboard all the objections that I've heard. And I'd write out what is my knee jerk reaction? And because that's how we usually do it, right? We go on a listing appointment, seller says something and we go and we something falls out of our mouth. So I would actually write it out and go, whew. That didn't sound so good. What could I have done differently? And I rewrote all of those dialogues. And then I'd practice them so that they're automatic. And if a seller asks me to cut my commission, it's boom, I know what to do. It's, it's like tying my shoes. It's like breathing. It's unconscious competence. So two things, I'm gonna answer it with two things. And I don't know which comes first, the cart or the horse, but have a schedule and schedule time that ties into the standards of things that you want in your life um, and develop your skills, develop your skills. And what's great in real estate, you know, I mean, we got, I don't know, last count over a million realtors in the United States. Doesn't require a lot of training. I love what you guys do. You're supporting this industry and you're helping them develop their skills. We need more of that. Um, there are so many agents out there that don't have skills. And the public doesn't think very highly of our profession because the masses don't have any skills. We watch these reality shows and these movie stars who are listing agents go, uh, so do you want to accept this offer? Huh? Do you? And I'm like, really? That's, that's what you got? Well, this property is going to be sold really quickly if you don't buy it. Really? That's what you got? So it's a little, I'm very, very passionate about it. But I would say to acquire excellence as a result in life, you've got to have that standard to stand out. you got to put in the work. My kid's out there throwing the football right now. Like here it is, 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Other kids are playing Xbox video games. Skype in with their friends. He's doing his drills because he has a goal and he has a standard and it's a must. It's not a should. Tony says that we need to stop shooting all over ourselves. Right. It's awesome. I should play football. I should practice. I should put down the M&Ms. He says, knock it off with the shoulds and make turn your shoulds into musts and you'll change your life forever. I've got things that have come up for me since we started this part of the conversation. <laughs> I hope we can get to all three. I'm going to try opening the loops and it's, we'll see where we go as far as closing them. And so uh, loop number one, uh, you mentioned incompetent, incompetence, uh, conscious. Un I know you've said it before and I've heard you say it. So I'm kind of, I want us to spend competence. them. Yeah. The, the, there's kind of like the four or three different versions of that. So I'd love for you to unpack that concept a little bit. 
Okay. That's number one. Uh, number two is you mentioned routine. You mentioned drills. And so based on the clients that you coach, what are some of the most successful routines? So that way people listening to this right now can go borrow or model one of those. And then third, you said skill. You said skill. You said skill. Let's save this one for last. This last one is what skills right now should agents be practicing to earn business, build relationships, whatever you think is the objective or outcome of that skill. And let's save that one for the end. Okay. All right. So the four levels of learning, there's four. When we enter something new for the very first time, could be real estate as a profession, could be a mortgage originator, could be an appraiser, could be you want to learn how to play guitar, you want to learn a foreign language, you want to learn to throw a football, anything that you're trying to learn for the first time, you enter at level one, unconscious incompetence. Even expired listings and expired leads, that's probably a big one. Yep. You don't know what you don't know. Like how hard is it to get a seller to list their home with me when it didn't sell before? All I should do is call them and they, it should be that easy, right? We don't know what we don't know. So we're playing a guitar. It's really hard and you're thinking about it. Or we're trying to speak a new language or throw a football. We don't know. How, how hard is it to throw a football? Let me tell you, it's hard. I mean, I got a kid who's pretty good at it and I know how much I suck. So anything you enter for the first time, you enter in at unconscious incompetence. And then what happens is in time, you start to learn all the shit you didn't know. Oh, I need to know. So in football, elbow up, football out, stance, grip, um, eyes down the field, eyes up, not down. Like you start to recognize what your mistakes are what you don't know in real estate. Oh my God. Um, we have to put this listing into the MLS. You didn't even know that when you get into real estate or there's an appraisal that has to happen and that needs to all come into a line or you're not going to get the clear to close and you didn't know that. So in time you start to learn the things that you don't know. And that level two is called conscious incompetence. We know what we don't know. Then we want to get to level three. Level three is conscious competence. We know all that we need to know, but we don't yet know it. We're conscious about it. So my son's thinking about, okay, the, I got to keep my elbow up. But when you're doing that in a game, it's detrimental. Hey, the sellers at some point can ask you to reduce your commission. And and if you're at the listing appointment and that happens and you're in your head, you're dead. If you're thinking about it, you're dead. So conscious competence is level three. But we have to progress to all three levels. And level four is the skill level, mastery, unconscious competence. And we all have it, which means we can all acquire more of it. You tied your tie today. Did you think about it or did you just do it? I'm not going to answer that. Okay. So maybe it's, maybe you're a little rusty, but if you do it frequently, you don't have to think about it. You just do it. You could do it driving down the highway. Have you ever seen somebody putting on their makeup while they're driving down the highway? It's scary shit, but they're doing it and they're not even thinking about the highway because they're driving and they're skilled. So, or we drive past our exit because we were thinking about other stuff, but how did we not get in an accident? Because we're skilled. We ride our bikes, we tie our shoes, we um, get dressed in the morning. Those are all skills we've mastered. And here's the great news. You can master any skill you want, any skill you want. You wanna learn how to play a guitar, you can learn it. You wanna learn how to play the piano, you can learn it. Now the standard that you have will determine the level of proficiency. So those are the four levels of learning. Ooh, you just you just dropped a little bit of sprinkles on this ice cream here, um, like that. So you talked about standards before, and now you've talked about essentially skill levels. 
here and you just kind of cross them over. Just spend a little bit more time playing with that on how unconscious competence and the highest levels of skill get married together. So that it has to do with your standards, right? So you can get really proficient selling real estate. And I would say that most agents in the US and Canada for sure get to a point where they understand all the components and they can get through it. But they sell eight homes a year, 10 homes a year, 80 homes a year. Their level of success is in direct proportion to their standards of what's acceptable. And in order to go to the next level, they have to take their skill to another another, another level. I'll give you an example. I, I'm not a huge basketball fan, but I have seen Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant play. And, it, and they play at the highest level. And if you've ever had the opportunity to see somebody who's world class at something, even a gymnast, you know, you remember watch the Olympics and you see these girls do flips on the balance beam, jump through the air, land on their feet and stick it. And you're like, holy shit, that was beautiful. They have the highest, well, their standard is to be the best in the world. So their standard and that what's acceptable and what's not is the standard. And they keep working on their skill because we can always be better. Hmm. I'm very good in real estate. I can be better. I'm better today than I was five years ago. I'm better today than I was 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, I was at the top of my game. So we can always be improving and we get to that point where we're complacent, I guess, or we don't have the standard to, to go even further. What's really remar remarkable is to see somebody who's so obsessed with being the best at what they do and when I say obsessed, there's a few people like that that are famous that we know we know like that. Like Jack Nicholson, he's obsessed with being one of the greatest actors of all time. Kobe Bryant, obsessed with being the greatest player. Michael Jordan. And it's so miles apart. Like when you play in the NBA, you are the best in the world. It's competitive. When you play in college, you're really good. But to go to the pros, it's a whole nother level. And to be, you know, the greatest of all time, I'm from New England, so I don't want to offend anybody. And he's no longer on our team, but people know who I'm talking about. Like that guy's obsessed. Like him, don't like him. He's worked his ass off to produce the results that he's produced. He's made sacrifices. You know, there's so many places we could go with that and, I want to take us back to that second loop that we opened, which was routines. And in this case, world-class real estate professionals, the people that you coach, what does their schedule or a couple of their schedules look like? Because like you said, it's the reps, it's the consistency, it's the skills that needs to happen inside of a certain period of time where those results can start to raise the standards. So help me help us understand what those schedules look like or sound like. Well, they're super disciplined for starters. They have a schedule. They recognize the things that move their business forward, like marketing, like prospecting, calling expireds, going through their CRMs, um, making their calls daily. So they're massively disciplined and they, they stick to a schedule. They've created routines and rituals that are, make it virtually impossible to fail. Uh, they incorporate training and they're obsessed with getting better. They role play, they rehearse, they practice. Those that have teams have team sessions where they, they, um, they do live scenarios, right? They, it's like drills. So in football, you know, the coach will hit my kid with a pad and it's simulating a six foot five, 280 pound lineman coming at him. So to get him to, to move, not fumble the football. Good, highly successful real estate agents with high standards, they simulate with themselves or with their team in a live session, 
role plays and examples, live game experiences. Hey, seller just said, hey, Justin, could you get to the price with all this crap about you and your company? I don't really want to hear about that. I just want to know what my house is worth. Go. What do you say, Justin? What do you say? That's what the best do. They practice. Somebody once told my son this, how you do something is how you do everything. So how do you practice at work? How do you get ready? One of my favorite quotes, Justin, is Abraham Lincoln said that he, if he had 16 hours to chop down a tree, he'd spend 15 sharpening his axe. And he beat the guy that was chopping away for 16 hours with the Dell axe with one hour of chopping. That's what the best in the world do. They practice real game situations. Uh, so rituals, drills, and they do it consistently. Repetition is the mother of skill. It's not a once a quarter thing. It's a daily thing. Could you help maybe break it down into maybe time blocks? Like I said, I've seen your schedule. It looks like a game of Tetris and... For those who don't have the the years of experience it takes to time block the way you have, have an RPM rapid planning method, maybe there's a way we can translate some of Tony's RPM into something that works for real estate agents. I got I got a really great analogy. Okay. So imagine that we had a five gallon pail in front of us. It's clear so you can see through it and it's empty. So visually in your mind's eye, can you see a five gallon pail in front of you? Mm -hmm. I bring out a satchel of rocks. They're the size of my fist, but the size of a softball. And I go, Justin, and anybody watching, take those rocks out and put them in the pail until you can't get any more in. So now they're piled up. And every time you pile them up, like they're piled, but they're falling over. So we visually see the pail is full. Then I bring out a bag of gravel. And I go, can you get any of the gravel into that bucket? And you go, oh, yeah, I could. And we sift and sort and shake the bucket and the gravel falls through the, the voids. Can you visualize that happening? I can. Okay. Then I bring some fine, fine, fine sand. And I go, can you pour that sand in to get through the voids of the gravel? So we see that the bucket's getting heavier and heavier. And I go, when the bucket's full, tell me it's full. And then I bring out a canteen of water and you pour the water on and everything settles. And now the water is clearly atop the bucket and you can't get any other contents in. So that's your schedule, the five gallon bucket. What if you put the water in first? How would you get the other contents in that bucket? It'd be impossible. So you need to put the big rocks in your schedule first. So you take a blank schedule, really easy exercise. Everybody can do it. You don't need a lot of skill. You just need a lot of why. You need a reason. You got goals and you want to apply this strategy. So you take a blank schedule and you go, I'm going to work on lead generation three times a week, one hour each time. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to put in my calendar lead generation. I'm going to do three sessions of calling for two hours, three times a week. So now we've got nine hours of our week scheduled. I'm going to put family time in my calendar. I'm going to put appointments in my calendar. So all of the things that are big rocks, personal development, role playing, practicing my scripts, jumping on a Red X training. All of that goes in my calendar. And for most of us, my calendared working on the business Big Rocks is about 10 to 12 hours a week. The rest of the stuff is filler, right? It's processing a listing, taking a home inspector's call. But you know what happens in real estate? And, and we just are so reactive as a society. We're in the middle of this educational session that we carved out time for. And without question, there are people on their phones checking their emails because their email just went off. 
and we're reacting to a, we're reacting to a pebble. That email is not going to change your life, but perhaps a training session will change your life, or perhaps a role play session consistently over time will change your life, or perhaps calling expireds consistently every day will change your life. But we're so we don't schedule those things. So to answer your question in an easy way, I use the big rocks analogy. Identify those things that are dollar producing activity and don't deviate from them. While I'm on with you today, there are no distractions. Zero. And I know you know this about me. And you know, please forgive me if anyone feels that I'm coming across a little bit braggadocious. I've worked my ass off to develop th these disciplines. I'm no better than you. I've been way in way worse quicksand than probably most people ever looking at me on this call. I care deeply. It it requires a discipline. And I am fully engaged and fully and present in my schedule. So you've seen my Tetris board schedule. When it says date night with Janet, I'm on date night with Janet. When it says college visits with the kid, with, with my oldest, when it says robotics championship with my youngest, I'm 100% engaged and I'm proud of that. And do you know what? I don't lose any business as a result of it. This crap of we need to be, we need to answer a phone call within five minutes of getting the lead is nonsense in my opinion. I don't know if you teach that. I disagree with it. I think that real estate serves our life. It's not our life. It's what we do. It's not who we are. Mm. And we need to stop being so attached to every opportunity. And by the way, as you develop your skills, people will wait for Brian Moses to call them back because they know I'm gonna add value and make a difference in their life. And when they know that you're not like everybody else, when you stand out, they'll leave a message and say, please, can you call me back? But most realtors, and I was one too, we're calling the prospect, hey, will you please call me back? And it's an act of desperation and it's nauseating and it doesn't have to be that way. You and I have spent a lot of time together in the past talking about differentiation, and I'm sure that's a whole hour in and of itself we could go into. And so let's let's put that out there, but for another time, because I, I, I heard that, I was like, differentiation, that is the key differentiator for so many agents. Uh, but I would like to speak to a couple of things is uh, we're getting some questions in from the audience and just letting them know I'm getting them. I'm going to be answering them soon and that I would like to get us to really the next step in our conversation, which is uh, the tactical, practical, what do I say, what do I do, given today's environment, if we're gonna practice reps, and we've got the schedule now of champions, and we know what our rocks are, what are the practical things that we're gonna say and do in those moments in time? And so for your clients, what are they working on? Who are they calling and what are they saying? So great question. So I've been advising people to meet people at the 50 yard line. And what I mean by that is not meet people with your agenda, meet people with something to add value to meet them to support their agenda. And a way to introduce that. So we've added an introduction because there are people that are so judgmental today. I've been criticized for offering coaching in these crazy times. Real estate agents that I coach have been criticized for soliciting listings during these crazy times, reaching out to buyers at, because these times are crazy and then we're judged. So let's preface that and say the following. Let's say that they were to do a Facebook Live or just want to expose themselves to the market. Hey, I'm Brian. I'm with ABC Real Estate. And, you know, first of all, I want to tell you that I hope you and your family and your loved ones are safe. We're going through some challenging times. 
I work at ABC Real Estate, and there are buyers out there that want to take advantage of today's low interest rates. They want to maximize their purchasing power because the rates have dropped. It also saves them tens of thousands of dollars in unnecessary interest payments that they'd like to capitalize on. And maybe they just have the need to, they're in a lease that's about to expire and they need to find a property. Conversely, there's sellers in the market today that may be going through a divorce, a job relocation, and they need to sell their home. For those people, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm here for you. I can support you and I can help you. And if you're not one of those people, please don't be offended. But I'm not going to stand by and do nothing when people need my help. So what I'd like to offer you is the following. I'd like to invite you to a Zoom call so that we practice safe social distancing. And if you're thinking about selling your home, we can give you a market update. I can show you what homes in your neighborhood have sold for right on my computer screen so that you have a better understanding of what's going on in the market and you're prepared and positioned when that time comes. I can also give you some inexpensive tips, cheap, inexpensive things that we can do or that you can do to dra drive up the sales price of your home. And if that would benefit you, I'd love for you to reach out and we can connect on a Zoom call. There's no cost, no obligation for this, by the way. The other thing that I'd like to cover with you on this call and to add value and make a difference in your life if, it's, if you find it valuable is to cover some of the many catastrophic mistakes home sellers make that cost them thousands of dollars in unnecessary expenses as a result of a home inspection negotiation or lost equity in the transaction. So if you want to minimize that, we can cover that too. And then lastly, there are expenses besides commissions and mortgage payoffs that you'd be incurring, and you should know what those are so that you can get your ducks in a row. So if those things would add value to your life and you'd like to learn a little bit about the market while we're having some downtime, send me a private message, give me an email, call me at the contact information below, and like I said, there's no cost or obligation. I'll be happy to talk with you. Now, if they did that, what do you think would happen? I think that was nailed on the head. And for our audience who are watching and listening to this live right now, if you liked that, make some comments, give us some thumbs up, let Brian know he's added some value to your mind, to your business right now. Because I think regardless of the medium, because I think Yesterday's conversation, I was with Mike Sherrard, one of the top social media agents in the country. Actually, he's in Canada, so we'll say North America, continent. Wow. Yeah, uh, I can make some introductions for you, actually. I think you like him, you guys would get along. Uh, we were talking about there's the message, which is you just delivered, and then there's the medium. So message can go across all mediums. And so whether agents are calling expireds, FISBOs, doing neighborhood connecting farming right now to check yeah. in on how your farm's doing or social media or video that the message is what's important. Whatever your skill level is at right now for delivering it across a medium, we can improve those. But whatever you're most comfortable with, I feel like to do nothing right now in this market, especially the position that you've been able to capture in words of leadership and service, those are the two big things I haven't heard explained the way you've said them today have been a fantastic way for agents to feel confident that they're doing the right thing for their community and helping serve the right people in the right way. Thank you. And it's not from a selfish perspective, right? We have an ability to make an impact in the lives of people in our community. And I think we have a fiduciary responsibility to them to do it because there are some agents in your market, for those of you watching, that don't have the skills that you have that don't have the drive, the dedication. And it would be, um, I don't know what the word is, irresponsible of you to not let the public know that you care and that you can help them. Mm. So speaking of irresponsible acts, I'm kind of setting this up here a little bit. Um, again, I, I try to be the voice of our customers, of our audience, of our internal teams, uh, I call them our internal customers. Marketing feels like it's a, a vehicle of service to uh, not just the people outside the walls, but inside as well. 
well. And uh, I'm always trying to help our support and sales team become better at articulating value. In the absence of value, people default to price. And so that's why people stop paying for things because they don't understand the value. And so tying that to irresponsible acts of, uh, of on our part is if we don't help agents understand the value of what's in front of them with the current tools that we are offering and that they're paying for, um, we lose and they lose. It's a lose lose situation. And so if you could speak to our audience right now, uh, especially our customers who are fearful, lacking the vision that you set up at the beginning of this on how to take advantage of the opportunities, especially given the leadership framework and language you just gave us, um, what could you say? What would you say to them as to what they should do and how to best get value out of the products they have from us? Great question. So there's a lot of ways I Go, but I'll just respond. Um, if you're a human being who's asking how much things are and constantly looking at costs, I think you're looking at it from the wrong lens. You should be asking, what's the value of this? And if I implement this, what would be the return on that investment? When you do that, you generally won't make poor decisions. Um, the other thing that I'd say to that question, Justin, is that you need to spend money to make money, right? We need to invest. Now, there's a, there's a journey. Um, there's three types of media. There's expensive media, inexpensive media, and free media. And there's, I would say that a lot of real estate professionals jump into the expensive media because they see the superstars in their market doing that. That would be like me going to the gym and seeing Sylvester Stallone benching 500 pounds for reps and going, huh, I want to look like him. Let me put 500 pounds on the bar. It'll, as my son says, you'd get buried. It'll go right through me. So you want to walk before you run and you want to run a 5K before you run a 10K. So when you're building your business, the mistake I made is I went right into the wrong thing. So develop your skill. What good does having all the leads if you're not going to consume the training that goes along with it with what to say? And you guys do a great job at Red X, of not only providing the tools, but the training to go with it. There's so many companies out there that just have tools. And then that would be like me getting an AK-56. And I don't even know if that's a rifle, but you guys get it, right? Because I'm not. But I'd probably not be the guy that should be shooting an AK-57. I don't know where the safety switch is. And getting no training goes back to the skills, right? I'm motivated to shoot the gun but not get hurt. But motivation isn't enough. So I would, um, you know, success leaves clues. You guys are a company that has been around for a while. You have massive success stories. And that, that would be my filter in evaluating a company. And not and sticking to one thing consistently, right? In our industry, it's so common for people to go, oh, there's a prettier technology over there. Let me go try that. And it's a bust right? Stay with something consistently for a period of time and build momentum would be my advice. Momentum takes time, but once you have it, nothing stops it. I think you answered that with the most sound principles I've heard so far. And that like any tool, if you don't have the training, it's usually not the tools fault for not working or getting value out of it. It's usually the person who doesn't, is in a, essentially what you said before, state of unconscious incompetence. They don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And we live in a society too. And you don't subscribe to it. And your best members don't. And I don't. And my best members don't. But a lot of people do. And that's instant gratification, right? And we expect our success to come from external forces or external factors or external tools. Our success, folks, is 100% up to us. I, you know, the best advice I could give anybody is to not be a victim, right? If my son, you know, 
were to flunk out of school, that's not his teacher's fault, that's his fault. Um, and when we don't achieve our goals, you know, I have another great quote, God's delays are not God's denials. Don't give up. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. I've seen people at the one yard line, they're inches from putting it in the end zone. And they go, you know what, let me go this direction. And they were just about to break through, have some momentum and parlay that into compounded returns. And they quit and go somewhere else. Well, we hope none of our customers who are watching this right now end up making the same mistake. And as we use the last couple of minutes right now, I'd love to get into answering some of the questions that have been popping up since we sure. started. And so uh, Dan McHorter, he's been a, a regular viewer the last couple of days. Good to see you, Dan. Thank you. Um, he asked about your scripts or study materials. So I know you do have trainings and links and stuff available. And so if he wanted to learn a little bit more about your, I'm sure, He's interested in how you said things earlier. That's when that comment popped up. Where could you direct him to? Um, Brian Moses inner circle.com. Great. So Brian Moses inner circle.com. Um, all of our tools, scripts, resources, training videos are um, available for you on Brian Moses inner circle.com. It's a great community. Great. And uh, I'm sure someone behind the scenes here is going to put that in the chat for everybody to click and uh, got a lot of positive feedback. Everyone loves what you've said. I mean, you've made such a big difference. Uh, another question here is people want to know Lilo, another uh, recurring guest here on the show. I think she's from Italy actually watching this. Um, she wants to know some of your favorite books. I think she spelt the word favorite in a way. A, 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 yeah. Favorite, favorite book. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So if you have any of your favorite books, I know you've got tons. If you could drop whatever comes to mind, that would be great oh, to share with the audience. I mean, yeah. So it's usually content, context specific. So depending on what you're trying to solve, what you're trying to grow would be different. But since in general, I like um, The Richest Man from Babylon is a great short little parable that talks about paying yourself first. A Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Amazing book, story about a Jewish death camp survivor. Um, you know, you think you got problems, read that book. You'll feel your pro you, you, would, you wouldn't trade in a million years. Uh, you Were Born Rich by Bob Proctor. Great book on the psychology, how the conscious and unconscious mind connect. Um, you Were Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Classics. They probably have heard of that. My library is over there. Um, those are the those are my favorites. Those are my all time favorites. On leadership, I like General Schwarzkopf's autobiography. It doesn't take a hero. Um, five star general, great book, great read. So those those are the ones that come to mind. That's fantastic. And I'm going to ask this question, but I already have a tinge of the answer in my head, but I don't want to answer it. It's your question. So when we were talking about services and trying them until a certain point, um, one question came from Amanda, another recurring viewer here. Hi, Amanda. Good to see you again. Um, sticking with a service, how long to stay with it until you see results? And I'm sure there's a, a balance between is it the service or is it your discipline and training? Yeah. So if other people are getting results and I'm not, I'm the common denominator. Okay. So... Mm -hmm. I always accept responsibility for my successes and my failures. I would reach out to that service provider. Like I would want nothing less than a coaching client I coach who's struggling or not having the results that we'd like them to have to raise their hand and go, hey, is it me? Am I not getting it? What am I doing wrong? Can you help me? A good service provider will bend over backwards to turn the corner and it could be a simple step in the process that you're missing. Um, you know, if you were going to make a cake and you forgot to put eggs in the ingredient, you know, it says it calls for a three eggs and you don't put the eggs in and you put it in the oven, it's not gonna come out well. So we wanna make sure that you're following things precisely and sometimes you think you are, but you're, you may not be. And just raising your hand and going, hey, could you give me a hand? Could you take a look at it? What am I doing wrong? 
It could be is the simple, simple uh, get you back on track. Fantastic answer. Us usually things like that aren't black and white. It's usually not all or nothing. It's is some investigation and research. And uh, one last question from uh, Maurice Bishop. One mistake you think agents are making right now in terms of lead generation? Uh, there's a lot, but the, here's the big one. They're promoting themselves. So they're spending money promoting themselves going, however, you know, I sell lots of homes or I provide great service or I'm number one in my office or I'm number one or I just won this award. Um, any self-promotion that you're doing is a big mistake. And instead, because the public doesn't care about your successes, and I don't mean that to be mean, they're happy for you, but it doesn't benefit them and it's not going to cause them necessarily to call you. If you were on the, um, the podcast when I did that narrative about what I would say to the market at this time, notice it wasn't about me and my success. It was about what I'm offering the community. So when it comes to marketing and advertising, add value, make a difference, make an offer, invite them to participate in your value and tell them how to get a hold of you. Mm. It's not about how great you are or how many homes you've sold. So that would be the biggest mistake I see still happening in our industry today. Yeah, let me redirect Maurice back to the earlier part of today's show where um, you had gone into that really great script. It was really the messaging, like we talked about message and medium. That message right there, I think you could take just even one piece out of that and that would help answer a lot of what he's talking about in terms of the mistake agents are making. Um, so we are unfortunately out of time today, Brian. And so I just want to talk to the audience real quick and just thank Dan, Lilo, Maurice, Amanda, let's see here, Robert, and all the people, John, uh, Chad, everyone who checked in shows up on a day-to-day -day basis who are trying to build their skills, right? They're not just sitting around doing nothing during this time. Thank you so much for showing up on the show. If Brian had made a difference in your day, if he's added value to your life, that was, that was really the underlying theme today is how to add value to people's lives. If he's added value, please give us some smiley faces, some claps, some love, say hi, check in right now. Uh, we're going to do another session tomorrow, of course, as always, uh, one thirty-five live here at the Red X and that's PM on mountain time. I'm terrible with time zones, So just do that yourself. Thank you everybody. Happy Easter, happy Passover. Uh, Brian, if there's a way for people, who are interested to get a hold of you? Can you drop some links, some knowledge, some contact information? Sure. So uh, they can email us coaching at brianmoses.com. They could go to brianmosesinnercircle.com or follow us on Facebook at Real Estate Training Breakthroughs. Hmm. We're also on Instagram, LinkedIn. And um, I appreciate the opportunity, Justin, and from you your staff that runs these podcasts and Red X uh, and making it happen. It's always great to see. It. And hopefully your people got, got some value out of today. I hope I think so too. And helping businesses, helping businesses, helping people right now. Um, I, I know I'm going to go into this only because I know you personally and I want to, I want to help you out. I know you had a training that you were going to do before all you know, that level and standard we talked about on our personal podcast together. And so if anybody's interested in attending the future version, whenever it might happen, I'd love to give you the opportunity to drop that link as well. So that if anybody wanted to attend that, I, I would imagine, was it Profitability and Growth Summit? If you could fill that PGS in, I think it's- 2020com but we haven't even, we haven't promoted it. It was gonna be in Boston in June, but if you go to PGS, 2020.com you'll see when we update it and get new dates it'll be in there fantastic just trying to help you out there i know Appreciate people are blown it, yeah. away with that and so tomorrow oh wait no tomorrow's saturday i've been doing this every day lost track of time today is friday monday on monday we've got another fantastic lineup of speakers coming in uh we've got jay baruby cammy baker chris salerno these are people who we 
handpicked, hand selected to continue to give us all insights, just like Brian did on the perspectives of, of what to know, what to say, what to do during these times. So check in here. Uh, yeah, go Saturday, right, Maurice? Um, I think I need one day off. Um, so this is the place, this is the channel, this is the podcast we've set up for the entire real estate community, not just Red X customers. We want to be able to help raise standards as Brian talked about today. And so if you need accountability, you need friends, you need connection, you need skills, you need ideas, whatever it is, show up here. This is the place for you. We look forward to having Brian come back on the show. And for everybody who's on the email list to get the daily updates, Tyler Lee, boom, 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 our videographers, hustling right now to get us out that video of all the scripts that have happened from these episodes. And so be on that list so you can get the email when they show up. And so that's it for today. I'm your host, John Zimmerman. Brian, stay with us for the after party, after show. We'll do a little chit chat. And for everybody else, have a great weekend. Happy Passover and happy Easter to y'all. Bye-bye.